It was called 15 minutes of pure terror. And indeed it was. But what came afterwards was worth it. Joy, pride and excitement. I don't need to tell you why, because India's Chandrayaan-3 mission has succeeded. As the ISRO chairman said, India is on the moon. All eyes were focused on the mission control room in Bengaluru. It was a room full of tense faces, politicians, bureaucrats, and the most terrified of the lot are scientists. They had been here before. In 2019, India was focused on a similar mission control room. We were waiting for Chandrayaan-2 to land. It was a heartbreaking moment for the whole country. But today, all that pain has been forgotten. I'll be honest though, the countdown was nerve-wracking. ISRO had a display of how far the module was from the moon. And with each minute, it kept dropping. 40 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 10 kilometers, and finally, zero. The Vikram lander had successfully arrived on the moon. We were watching the scenes from the control room in our newsroom. The, no, the row was deafening. I can only imagine what it was like inside that room, the tension, the expectation, and in the end, the elation. As we speak, India's rover is driving around on the moon, and that too on the south pole of the moon. It's a historic first. We told you about this yesterday. No country, no country has ever landed on this part of the moon. It's dark, it is tough terrain, and it's uncharted. But right now, India has a rover there. It's truly a proud moment in India's history. A big congratulations and thank you to all the scientists at ISRO. You have given us a great gift. It's also a tribute to ISRO's persistence. You were talking about a very complicated maneuver here. The Vikram lander was heading towards the moon at 6,000 kilometers per hour, 6,000, that's 10 times the speed of a plane. To land such a fast moving object on the moon is not easy. Come to think about it, landing at such speeds on the earth is not easy either, but the ISRO did it. And that too without a billion dollar budget. The total spending on Chandrayaan-3 was $75 million. That's five times less than a Boeing 777. Two thirds of the budget of Hollywood films like Gravity and Interstellar. It's a lesson on ingenuity. It's also an inspiration for the entire world. Space was considered the playground of the rich. The US and the Soviet Union had money to spare, so they took turns launching rockets. Others simply watched and admired. But India has shown it's not a rich boys club. You don't need big, endless budgets to reach the moon. What you need is expertise, talent, and confidence, and ISRO has all three. Even before the landing, the world was all praises. Corporate leaders like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos said they were rooting for Chandrayaan-3. Even Pakistan was rooting for it. Their former information minister, Fawad Chaudhry, said it's a great moment for mankind for once we agree with him. In fact, he wanted the landing to be broadcast in Pakistan. Tells you how important this day is. And the journey makes it even more special. India's space mission has overcome countless obstacles. Sanctions, lack of resources, lack of political support, technical failures, launch issues, I could go on and on, but each obstacle made ISRO stronger. It made our scientists aim higher and higher. Today's landing is the result of their hard work. It's also the start of something bigger. India has plans to send astronauts to space by 2025, and who knows, maybe rovers on Mars. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's look at how Vikram the lander and Pragyan the rover landed on the moon. Take a look at this. The tension was palpable. Expectant faces peered at the giant screen in front of them. Complicated numbers danced around. ISRO's former chairman had called it 15 minutes of terror. He wasn't wrong. Thousands of kilometers away, India's lunar module was making its final descent. Destination, South Pole of the Moon. In 2019, India's second lunar mission had crashed here. Last week, a Russian module met the same fate. So, the pressure was extra. With each second, the lander got closer. It was traveling at more than 6,000 kilometers per hour. To land from that speed isn't easy. It would take skill and precision. 
A few minutes past 6 p.m. Indian time, ISRO's mission control room exploded. People Elated scientists coming. screamed and hugged each other in relief. On the giant screen, Prime Minister Narendra Modi joined in. He waved an Indian flag from South Africa. The mission was accomplished. Vikram, the lander, had reached the South Pole. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. Years of hard work led to this moment. Around a thousand scientists and engineers worked on Chandrayaan 3. The total budget, just over $75 million. But what ISRO lacked in funds, it made up with in ingenuity. For most people, the moon is an obsession. For scientists researching it, for business leaders wanting to colonize it, for parents singing lullabies about it. So, reaching the moon often becomes a national obsession. And India was no different. Chandrayaan-3 lifted off from Sriharikota on the 14th of July. Since then, Indians have been marking their calendar. August 23rd was D-Day. Millions of Indians tuned in to watch ISRO's live stream. Around 8 million to be precise. As the lander touched down, celebrations began. Not just inside the control room, but across the country. The Prime Minister addressed the scientists afterwards. He said new India had witnessed a new flight. India's successful moon mission is not just India's alone. This is a year in which the world is witnessing India's G20 presidency. Our approach of one earth, one family, one future is resonating across the globe. This human-centric approach that we present and that we represent has been welcomed universally. So, what's next for Chandrayaan-3? Vikram the lander isn't alone on the moon. Stored inside is Pragyan the rover. Both have a planned mission life of one lunar day. Here on Earth, that's around two weeks. The rover will drive around on the moon's surface. It'll send back crucial data to ISRO. Scientists are most excited about the prospect of water. Many believe the South Pole could be holding frozen water. If so, Pragyan will find it. It'll also leave India's mark on the moon, quite literally. The rover's wheels carry the Indian emblem along with ISRO's logo. As it explores the moon's dark and mysterious South Pole, it'll also imprint these logos on the surface. The moon has no wind or erosion, so the prints will remain for a long, long time. Perhaps as long as the moon exists. It's a tribute to how far India's space program has come. From carrying satellites on bicycles, to being pinned down by sanctions, to landing and exploring the moon. But don't think the story is over. Today's landing is the beginning of another chapter in India's space story. ISRO chairman S. Somnath alluded to it. Honorable Prime Minister called me and conveyed his greetings to each one of you, you and your family for the wonderful work you did in ISRO. Uh, so thank, uh, thanks are to him for the support that he is giving to us for missions like Chandrayaan 3 and the missions that are in the offing. I think that's a great word of you know, comfort that we are receiving for pursuing the inspirational work that we are doing for the nation. I want to tell you and I want to thank you also for each and everyone who prayed with us in the last many days, uh, who wanted this uh, success to happen in ISRO. I thank all those people in all around the country and maybe beyond the country for their blessings and wishes and and affection that he has given to each one of us for doing this work for the last so many years. The world is lining up to congratulate India. 
NASA chief Bill Nelson extended his wishes. So did South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa and the Maldivian President Ibrahim Soli. For many countries, this is a watershed moment. It proves the moon isn't a luxury trip. It doesn't need endless budgets. You can reach the moon with talent, skill and confidence. ISRO displayed all three. Only three countries had landed on the moon until now. The United States, the erstwhile Soviet Union and China. India's Pragyan has now joined this elite club. So, what's next for ISRO? We could say the sky is the limit, but it's clearly not. India has plans to send astronauts into space. It's also planning another mission to Mars and a separate probe to the Sun. Exciting times if you follow ISRO. But today is all about soaking in the moment. The moon you hear about in poems and tales isn't unreachable anymore. It's the runway for India's rover.